Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. Now, if you've been paying close attention to Rust updates and the dev blog and stuff like that, you may have noticed that Facepunch has recently started talking about these SRV records or the fact that we're able to set up DNS records for our servers. Now, for people that have been in this business for a long time, this might seem like old hat or fairly obvious, and you might be pretty comfortable with setting up your own records. However, for people that are just getting started with setting up Rust servers and everything that goes along with that, you might be a little bit confused about what all of this means and why it matters, how to do it, and why it's important. While I was researching everything for this video, I went back into the dev blogs to try and find out what Rust actually had to say about this new capability that we have access to, and for whatever reason, I couldn't find the information that I was looking for. So maybe it was never there, I'm not really sure. But being that it's not on the dev blog, I'm kind of wondering how there's so many questions, so many different people wondering how to do this or why they even want to do this. So in today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why you might wanna set this up for your Rust servers. And I'm also gonna show you the tools that are available to help you step-by-step set this up for your own communities. So what is a DNS record and why does it matter when it comes to hosting a Rust server? So let me explain. When you go to google.com or srtbull.com or rustadminacademy.com, you're not actually going to that address. You're going to some IP address and maybe sometimes a port. But with the use of a DNS record, we can use srtbull.com and direct that user to go from srtbull.com to the actual IP address that actually hosts the information that they're looking for. And there's a ton of different uses for a ton of different DNS records, but I'm just trying to maybe simplify this a little bit to make you understand why this is important to your Rust server. So as I'm sure you already know, your Rust server has an IP address and a port. Even if you have it hosted on your local network or you have it with a hosting provider, it still has an IP address and a port. So when a player joins your server and they add your server to their favorites list, they click on that star in the Rust directory, that's the information that it's saving. It's saving that IP address and the port location for your server. And that's all well and good, but what happens if you change your port or you change your IP address? Let's say you want to change from a local host server to a paid host. Well, your IP address and probably your port would change. Therefore, that server that's now saved on some player's favorites list is going to disappear and they're going to be like, what the hell? Where did that server go? I've been playing it for X amount of time. All of a sudden it's gone. They get pissed off. They go find another server and they never actually look for yours again. So you've probably lost that player forever. So what Facepunch has done has given us the capability to add a couple of records to our domain host. It will then give us an address similar to an srtbull.com or a google.com. It points to an IP address and a port that we have control over. So when a player adds your server to their favorites list, they're actually adding that SRV record instead of the IP address and the port. So what that means is if you change your IP address or your port, all you have to do is update that DNS record in the back end and nothing will change for that player on their favorites list. So they're still going to be able to find your server no matter what the IP address is or the port. So hopefully with that information, there's something going off in your brain saying, ding, ding, ding. Oh, this is a really good idea. I should probably set this up because I mean, let's face it. Sometimes we're going to change our provider or let's say we started out on a local network to get our server up and running, get it all built. And then we want to switch it over to an actual hosting provider. Well, if we can make that seamless for the end user, the players that are joining our servers, all the better for everybody. So if we go to wiki.facepunch.com to get the information that we're looking for for DNS records, let's go see what they have to say about it. So the information that they provide here is good with one tiny little detail that I found that I I'm actually really curious about, and I'm hoping somebody can actually explain this to me because it doesn't make sense that on the Rust wiki, there's bad information. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in just one sec. Anyway, so they give you two really good examples of how to set up these DNS records with your domain host in order to make this function for your server. The two examples that they use are Cloudflare and GoDaddy. And between these two examples, you should be able to extract enough information for whichever domain host you happen to be with. For example, I have one of my domains with namecheap.com and this information right here might look a little bit confusing, but you can extract enough information from this to make it make sense for namecheap.com. Another tool that was set up was set up by Riser or Ryan, depending on which hat you know him under. It's basically just a slimmed down version of what we just saw from the Rust wiki. But the really important difference that I wanna make you recognize here is this little note right down here. It says, if your server IP or query port changes, update the IP address in the A record and update the SRV port to your new query port 
if applicable. Now that query port is one distinct difference from the Rust Wiki. If we go back to the Rust Wiki, you'll see that they're actually talking about using your server's game port, which I find very interesting. Now, I've done this both ways, and I have to say that it only works when you use the server query port, not the server's game port. So either I'm doing something wrong or the wiki has bad information on it. I'm not sure which. Let me know in the comment section down below which method is actually working for you. Are you using the server port or are you using the query port? Or perhaps both work. I'm not sure. Although I've never seen a situation where there's two methods to do the same thing. So I. I can't really see that being the case, but hey, I'm ready to be proven wrong, so let me know in the comments. So I'm gonna be showing you my example on Cloudflare. So the first thing you wanna do is set up a new A record. So we simply click on this add record right here. And of course, it's gonna ask you what type of record you wanna add. We wanna add an A record. We wanna give this the name. So whatever our server is. So in this example, I just did test.srtbull.com, but you could do, let's say, 2x.ominousrust.com or vanilla ominousrust.com. So your name right here is the identifier before the rest of the address. And then where do we want to point this A record to? So the IPv4 address is the IP address of our server. In this example, I can just go back to the dashboard of where my server is actually hosted and grab this address right here in the top left hand corner. We can leave proxy status set to DNS only and the TTL will leave that at auto. These are just default settings. And then we can click on save and that record is now finished. So now we need to set up an SRV record that points to this new A record that we've created. So again, we're gonna click on add record. And this time, instead of setting up an A record, we're gonna be setting up an SRV record. So again, this might be a little bit different for your domain hosts, but the information should be all there. So using Cloudflare, the service and the protocol are all in the same section. So we would do underscore rust dot underscore UDP dot underscore, and then whatever name we used in our A records. In this case, this is test. And I just happen to know because I've tested this out a couple of times that on the Namecheap website, the service has its own entry and the protocol has another entry. So this would be separated into two different entries. So priority and weight, just leave those both at one. I think that's the default setting. The TTL will leave that at auto. And then we need to put in the query port for our Rust server, not the game port unless you all prove me wrong. So I've tested this. I know that this works. I've tested it using the game port too, but wasn't able to make that work. But that could be because I'm doing something wrong. So for this example, this is my query port for this server. So we can click on save. We're now done with both of those records. The last thing that we need to do to have this procedure all set up on the back end is add a CVAR to our Rust server startup file. That CVAR is server.favorites endpoint and then the address that we've now created. I'll show you what I mean. So on my hosting provider, which is icedhost.com, they give us an additional argument section where we can add specific CVARs that just not everyone uses every day. So at the very end here, you can see I've got plus server.favorites endpoint, and then I've got the address that we've now created, test.srtbull.com. Once we have that CVAR added, we just need to save our batch file or our startup file, or in this case, I don't need to do anything because it automatically saves every time I make a change, and then simply restart the server so that this new CVAR is now recognized and then we're good to go. Okay, great. Now what do we do with that information? Well, there's a couple of different things that we can do. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your records are actually set up correctly. So go into Rust, open up your F1 console, and try connecting to that new address that we've set up. So in this case, this is connect space test .srtbull.com. So we should see enough information in there that's gonna tell us that this is actually working. And in the background, you can see that it is actually in fact connecting to my server. Another thing we can do is actually add this to our favorite servers list. So let's go into Steam, let's open up our game servers. And now we can add a new favorite to our list simply by using the address that we've created using those two DNS records, test.srtbull.com colon, and then the port. So now you can see that server has now been added to our favorites list. If we go back into Rust and click on refresh, you can now see that that server exists on my favorites list. So, okay, great. Now we've added a server to a favorites list, big deal. But now if I change that IP address or that query port for that server, this is always gonna stay on that player's favorites list, whoever added it to their list, it's always gonna stay there. They're always gonna be able to find your server no matter what you're doing on the back end. Switching hosts or providers or playing around with the ports or IP addresses, whatever it is that you happen to be doing, as long as you update your DNS records, it's 
always going to show up the same way on their favorites list. Okay, so I know that we've gone into a kind of a weird area here talking about DNS records and all that stuff. I hope that this video helps people understand why this is an important tool and perhaps why so many people are talking about it, but don't really understand why they're talking about it. You know what I mean? It's kind of a weird area. And I do know for a fact that people got really excited about this, but they didn't understand what they were getting excited about wasn't the actual use of this tool. So I'm going to put links to both of those tools in the video description down below. Like I was trying to say before, if you basically make yours look the same as the examples that they've used using your information, not their information, chances are good you're going to be successful with setting this up. It's important to remember that sometimes DNS records can take up to 30 minutes to actually register with your domain host. It doesn't always take 30 minutes, but they will say that it can take up to 30 minutes. So I hope you were informed by this video. I know I kind of maybe stumbled through this a little bit, but I'm hoping that I'm giving you enough information to understand how this can be beneficial to you and why you might want to set this up. For those of you out there that don't have domain set up or websites or anything like that, if you've never even explored buying a domain, none of this information is relevant to you. This is only going to be relevant information for people that actually own domains or are interested in getting a domain for their community. All right. I hope you were informed by this video. If you were do me a favor and hit that thumbs up for me it helps me out more than you can ever imagine thank you all so much for watching i'll see you next week